Fauchagoo Yeel Scott's The Celtic Podcast. Kimra Ha Hulidunya, how is everyone? On today's show in Fekimich Beck and Gallic, that's Let's Try Little Gallic. Frustrated with Gallic? Today's topic is the Declaration of Arbroth. In everyday Celtic ways, the National Tartan Day. Now we're hearing music from Julie Fallis. Jamie McGeekin, Chris Andrucci, and Anna Murray. And in the history of Ireland, 563 Irish monastic influence during the Golden Age peaks with the foundation of schools by St. Columban, St. Brennan, at Iona. If you're already a subscriber to the The Old Scott YouTube channel and enjoy the variety of interesting videos and podcasts that we produce weekly, then you should join us on the The Old Scott Facebook group. Not only do you get all the great videos you already enjoy, but so much more. Come and connect with your Celtic community. Get on Yale Scott Facebook group. Learn the history of Gaelic songs as you learn to sing them. English and Gaelic lyrics are provided together to give you a feel for the song's meaning, even if you don't speak the language very well. Get ready. Or just sit back and enjoy these beautiful songs. Smirach Clan Donald, the Mavis of Clan Donald, is a Scottish Gaelic song in which the poet praises Sleet MacDonald's and North Uist. A Mavis is a colloquial name for the songbird thrush, but can refer to any male or female birds. It was used in Ireland and Scotland in the past, and the name Mavis also appears in Chaucer um, and was used by other Middle English poets. It was composed by John McCordrum, uh, Ian McFircher. From uh, he was he was born 1693. To, uh, he lived to 1779. He was one of the earliest of the village poets who uh, who who wrote it as an antiquarian recreation of the Celtic bard Ossian in the 1760s. Now the song says that he is on top of the hills, looking at the sun and clear skies, and the songbirds singing their tunes. He describes his own land as the land of heroes and poets. Clan Donald is praised highly for their skill and bravery in battle. The Jacobites are also referenced in this song. So, enjoy. Enjoy learning Schmirnach Clan Donald. Thank you. 
is native to the Gales of Scotland. Scottish Gaelic developed out of the Old Irish, and learning this beautiful language can be a direct link to your Gaelic ancestors. Follow along in Fekimich Beckham Gaelic, and like I said, let's try a little Gaelic. Frustrated with Gaelic? An easy way to keep the Scottish Gaelic language alive is to keep it in your daily vocabulary. Little bits here and there to let those around you know how important it is to you. This is especially important if you have small children. They will have the benefits of learning another language and share a common link with you and your heritage. Kimra Hashev How are you? Hamikama Tapalev I am good, thank you. Kimraha Shivhain How are you yourself? Gleva Very good. Kimraha U. How are you? Hagama Tapala. I am good, thank you. Kimra Ha Uhain. How are you yourself? Martin Va. Good morning. Fesker Ma. Good afternoon or good evening. Oyeva. Good night. Tapalev or Tapalat. Thank you. Shade of Eha. You're welcome. The next song I'm going to do is another Burns song. It's called Bonnie Wee Thing. Bonnie means lovely or beautiful. Wee meaning small. And it's, a, it's another Burns love poem. A bonny wee thing, canny wee thing, 
lovely wee thing worth thy mind. I would wear thee in my bosom, bonny wee face of thine. Wistfully I look and languish in that bonny wee face of thine. But my heart sounds with anguish, lest that wee thing be now mine. Wits and faith and love and beauty in all consolation shine. To adore thee is my duty, goddess of the soul of mine. Wistfully I look and languish in that bonny wee face of thine. And my heart is signs with anguish, lest that wee thing be now mine. Bonny wee thing, canny wee thing, lovely wee thing, word thou now mine. I would wear thee in my bosom, goddess of the soul of mine. I would wear thee in my bosom, lest that we think. Be now mine, Bonnie we thing of mine. Celtic history brings you the tales of the land, castles, warriors, heroes, legends, and customs that have created the rich, vibrant, and sometimes strange and wonderful history of the Celtic world. Today's topic is the Declaration of Arbroath how it was not the first declaration. This April 6th, we celebrated the anniversary of the Declaration of Arbroath. But the English claim to Ireland has always been contentious. You know, and as you're sitting there saying, what does that have to do with Scotland declaring independence? Well, as a noted journalist complained, now let the envious and the thoughtless end of vociferous complaints that the kings of England hold Ireland unlawfully as rule over Ireland had been offered to the Plantagenets by a papal bull order called Lauderbilter in 1155. Now Edward, this is Edward the Bruce, yeah, brother of uh, Robert the Bruce, uh, in later years got with Donald O'Neill and sent a remonstrance, which is this basically the same thing as a declaration, to Pope John XXII in 1317. This asked for Lauderbilter, which was back in 1155, to be revoked and informed the Pope that they had chosen Edward as their king. Now remember, this is 1317, three years before the Declaration of Arbroath. The remonstrance rejection of the claim was sent to uh, Pope John XXII by Donald O'Neill of the Kinal Egan line of the Northern O'Neills. The remonstrance describes Donald as king of Ulster and by hereditary right the true heir to the whole of Ireland. Now Donald claims the support of the Irish elite and people, calls for papal backing against the English rule, and offers the kingship of Ireland to Edward the Bruce of Scotland. The remonstrance's timing and link with Scotland are crucial. In 1314 at Bannockburn, Edward de Bruce's brother Robert, the Scottish king, halted Edward II of England's attempt to conquer Scotland, as we all know. Earlier, Robert de Bruce wrote to the Irish, emphasizing their shared ancestry, language, and customs, the medieval definition of nationhood, and urging cooperation in, to regain our nation's ancient freedom. Now, Edward Bruce landed in Ireland in 1315, and Donald joined his campaign. The remonstrance echoes Robert's letter 
and represents the Scots and Irish as one nation. Now, the kings of Lesser Scotia, which is Scotland, have all traced their ancestral origin to our Greater Scotia, which is Ireland, retaining our language and habits to some extent. Now, the real intent of Robert de Bruce and, of course, Edward de Bruce was to stop Ireland from being a ready source of soldiers for the English every time they wanted to go to war against the French or, or of course, the Scottish. And to move on from there, despite fawning over Edward de Bruce and the remonstrance, which it does very well, the papacy neither recognized Edward's claim nor agreed with the remonstrance, and his rule remained only over parts of Ireland and never over the whole island. Then, in the late summer of 1318, Sir John de Birmingham, with his army, began to march against Edward de Bruce, and on the 14th of October, 1318, the Scots-Irish army was badly defeated at the Battle of Falkirk by, of course, Birmingham's forces. Now, Edward was killed there, and his body was quartered and sent to the various towns in Ireland as a warning, of course, and his head was delivered to Edward, King Edward II, that is. Robert de Bruce, of course, had been in exile from Edward II, but returned to Scotland. Robert waged a highly successful guerrilla war against the English. At the Battle of Bannockburn in June of 1314, he defeated a much larger English army under Edward II, confirming the reestablishment of an independent Scottish monarchy. Now, with Robert's help in 1316, his brother Edward de Bruce was inaugurated as High King of Ireland, but, as we said earlier, was killed. Even after Bannockburn and the Scottish capture of Berwick in 1318, Edward II refused to give up his claim to the overship of Scotland. Some believe, having been emboldened by the defeat of Edward at Fulgert. So in 1320, the Scottish earls, barons, and the community of the realm sent a letter similar to that of the failed remonstrance of the princes to Pope John the 22nd, declaring that Robert was their rightful monarch. Now this was the Declaration of Arbroath, and it asserted the antiquity of the um, Scottish people and their monarchy. Four years later, Robert de Bruce received the papal recognition as King of an Independent Scotland, and the Franco-Scottish alliance was renewed in the Treaty of Corbel. The Treaty of Corbel in 1326 renewed the old alliance, which was from back from 1295. And the old now the old alliance was an alliance between the kingdoms of Scotland and France. It was designed by the Pope for the purpose of controlling England's numerous invasions. It confirmed the obligation of each state to join the other in declaring war if it was ever attacked by England. <laughs> and, and in 1327, the English deposed Edward II in favor of his son, and peace was finally made with Scotland.
Caledonia, you calling me? Now I'm going home. But if I should become a stranger, you know that it would make me more than sad. A Caledonia's been everything I've ever had. I've moved and I've kept on moving Proved the points that I needed proving And well I lost the friends that I needed losing And found others on the way And I have tried and I've kept on trying Stolen dreams, yes, there's no denying And well, that's the reason Why I seem so far away today So let me tell you that I love you And I'll think about you all the time Caledonia, you're calling me Now I'm going on But if I should become a stranger You know that it would make me more than sad Caledonia's been everything I've ever had Let me tell you that I love you And I'll think about you all the time A Caledonia, you're calling me Now I'm going home But if I should become a stranger You know that it would make me more than sad Caledonia's been everything I've ever had Caledonia's been everything I've ever had Everyday Celtic Ways brings you the mythology, traditions, and customs that have created a unique and personal culture that still affects those that are Celtic and those that just love the Celtic world. April 6th here in a couple days will be National Tartan Day here in America. It commemorates the Declaration of Arbroath and its importance. Here in St. Louis, we had a Tartan Day celebration, and it included world-class pipers, renowned Scottish singers, and local bands to keep your foot tapping. But for all that, it's our love of Scotland, our reverence for our tartans, once banned to be worn. And whether it's worn in the fields or a formal gathering, it's really about a drink with friends, even a wayward hound, and passing all these things on to future generations. This uh, first song that I'm going to do is a, a Robert Burns song called Green Grow the Rashies. It's um, one of Burns' more notable songs about uh, love. Green 
Green grow the rashes, oh. Green grow the rashes, oh. Sweetest hours I ever spent to spend among the lassies, oh. There's not the care on every hand. Every year that passes, oh, what signifies a life of mine? And twenty-four the lassies, oh, green grow the rashes, oh, green grow the rashes, oh, the sweetest hours I ever spent, I spent among the lassies, oh. Good afternoon. The worldly race me riches chase, and riches still me fly them all. And though at last they catch them fast, their hearts can never enjoy them all. Green grow the rashes, oh. Green grow the rashes, oh. The sweetest hours it e'er I spend, spend among the lassies, oh. Among the lassies, oh. She swears her lovely dears Her noblest work she classes, oh Her prentice hand she tried on man And then she made the lassies, oh Green grow the rashes, oh Green grow the rashes, oh the Sweetest hours it e'er I spent been to mind the lassies, oh, and I spent to mind the lassies, oh, and I spent to mind the lassies, oh, and I spent to mind the lassies, oh. Spent among the lassies, oh, 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 oh. Green grow the rashes, oh. Thank you. Top of Love of Now remember to check out my YouTube channel. It's got Celtic music, podcasts, Gaelic language, Gaelic song, Celtic history videos, plus lots more. And my Facebook group where you can give me your inputs and insights on all things Celtic. Goodbye, Apple Baby. Marsha Weave. But I'm going to let you go with a song.